Stay tuned after this movie for more previews from Roadshow. You don't happen to have a cigarette on you, do you? Sorry, I don't smoke. I'm doing kind of a survey, you know? You're not a family man, are you? Well, I have a family. Could I uh, see a picture of them? You have a picture? You, you want to see a picture of my family? I really would appreciate it. Uh-huh. You've got a boy and a girl. That's right. Where's the wife? She's not there. Why is that? We're divorced. Well, that's terrible. <laughs> that's not so bad. Well, maybe not for you, but how about the kitties? Can I see your watch? I am not going to give you my watch. Thank you very much, mister. Give it to me! Hey, God damn it! You give it to me! God, God damn it! I'm bleeding. I'm going to die. 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 I'm going They're extremely valuable. They're made by artists. Be Will you treat them gently, if you don't mind? Yeah, fine. Barbarian. Get in the car. Drive Get to in. the airport. Somebody open this door, please. Very soft. What are you doing? What are you doing? your home. <laughs> Where the hell else you gonna be, huh? Hey! Go up! You in there? <laughs> you hiding from your big brother tree? You hear me, Philip? I 
ain't in the mood for no hide-and-go-seek games, Philip. Don't tag me. I ain't gonna tag you. Because I'm sick and tired of being it, Treat. I told you. I ain't gonna tag you. You promise? Yeah. I promise. Do you have lunch today? Mm-hmm. What'd you have? You had star kiss tuna? Yeah. Mayonnaise? Mm-hmm. Helms. How much mayonnaise do you have, Philip? Just a couple tablespoons. A couple tablespoons, huh? Mm-hmm. If you only had a couple tablespoons, how come we're out of it? Ah! You're it, Philip. I had my fingers crossed. Come on, because you said you wouldn't. <laughs> You're in! Time out, Philip. <laughs> Game's over. No! Hey, go out tonight. We'll see Bonnie. Hey, if you go out, will you bring home some more Hellman's? You know, Philip. This place is going to shit. We're gonna have to pay for some home improvements. We never had home improvements before, Treat. Yeah. You know, I took a walk in the park today. Yeah? Bumped into this fella. Mm-hmm. Kicked me right in the shins. He kicked you? Yep. Look at that. Jesus. Gonna be fucking black and blue. I'll get the hydrogen peroxide. How come you can remember all them brand names, Philip? I mean, you don't have much of an intellect for anything else. But you seem to be able to remember all them brand names and the names of them various prizes. This comes to me. What's this, Philip? That's what? How come there are underlined words in this magazine? I got an idea, Treat. There's a word here. Perver Proverbial. Do you underline this word? You know I can't read, Treat. You got a dictionary, Philip? No. Got a dictionary? You sure you ain't got a pocket dictionary? You sure you ain't spending the day Reading books and magazines, looking up the meanings of particular words, getting yourself an education. I'm not education. Who on the line of this fucking word? It wasn't me. Someone come in the house while I was away? I don't know. I was in the attic. Someone come in the house while you was in the attic and underline this fucking word? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he did. Find him. All right. Kill him. Okay. I want him dead. You understand? Yeah. The man's stealing in my house like that. Kill him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's upstairs. Yeah. Maybe he's upstairs. Maybe he's hiding under the bed.
Hey, listen, buddy. You better get out of there. You better get out of here right now, buddy. I'm gonna kill you. It's all right, son. Really, it's all right. Don't touch me. Don't touch me, buddy. On the treat. He's coming at me, treat. He's coming at me. He's coming at me. <laughs> Get him? Oh, gee. He got me. What do you mean? I'm bleeding. Where is he? He leaped out the window. Out the window? Yeah. He got away? Uh-huh. What did he look like, Philip? Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn? The movie actor. I know Errol Flynn. Could have broke a leg leaping out a window like that. Yeah. He must be some kind of athlete. He looks pretty bad there, Philip. Yeah. Well, I better put on some hydrogen peroxide. No, treat it burns. You don't want it to get infected. Oh, come on. You don't want to lose your arm. I think I'm losing my arm. Drake, boy. It's a string of fucking pearls, Bonnie. What's this? A bowl of a... a fucking bowl of a... I love you, Sid. Millie. Jesus, I'm gonna puke. <laughs> Who's gonna wear this? A fucking corpse wouldn't wear a ring like this. You got anything else? What the hell is that? It's a leash. You mugging animals now, Treed? That's colored glass, for Christ's sake. You ain't gonna find precious jewels around here. I'll give you 70 bucks for the lot. Take it or leave it. Exactly in Barbados. <laughs> I'm in Newark. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, you Saxon pig. 
If you were a dead end kid, I'd give you everything I have. I swear to God. But give you the very shirt off my back. You don't have to go that far, mister. Oh, there are no limits as far as the dead end kids and me are concerned. I love them fucking dead end kids. <laughs> I'm not a dead end kid. <laughs> what a shame. What are you drinking, hey? Give me a beer. Beer? A beer, hey. I'm from Chicago, you know, born and bred. No kidding. Grew up in an orphanage. I didn't have no mommy or daddy. <laughs> I just had the dead end kids. Hey, right? Hey, I want to buy a drink for everybody, okay? Take it out of that, Ryan. Here you go. Finally met a dead end kid. <laughs> Finally met one. <laughs> I ain't one, though. Had the wings of an angel over these prison walls, I would fly and straight to the arms of my mother, and I'd be willing to die. The door's locked, Carol. Uh, Don't move. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mother, though, them dead-end kids. At the top of the morning, Irish mother. I love that woman. Yeah, you little devil, yeah. yeah. Corned beef and cabbage, cooking night and day. Yeah, I used to work up a hearty appetite just sitting in them dark Chicago movie houses. Yeah, watching them dead-end, dead-end kids, yeah! You got anything cooking in this house? Well, there's nothing cooking right now, Harold. Oh, I'll count, right? Well, it must be the middle of the night. Well, that's what I'm saying, you see. Now, you know, if you were to go to that, uh, that dead end kid's house, any time, day or night, that dead end kid's house smelling of corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, you just, you just walk straight into the kitchen and you cut yourself a slice. Ah. Yeah. Jesus Christ, treat my mouth is watering. My fucking mouth is watering. You want something to eat? I'm starving to death. We got tuna. Tuna? Yeah. Start this tuna. Where the fuck am I? You're in my house. Wait, you're offering me tuna? 
Yeah. Fuck them too now. Mmm. 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 Holy shit. Tuna. Where's my briefcase? Hmm? Over here. I was watching it for you. Yeah, well, I can do my own watching. Let's have it. Come on. Yeah. Sure. Come on, let's have it. Where are you going, Harold? I'm leaving. You can't walk! <laughs> I can't walk, can I? You're loaded. <laughs> How about that? It must be because I'm not a dead-end kid after all these years. I ain't no dead-end kid, I told you that. Don't kid me. You don't smell no corned beef and cabbage cooking around here, do you? <laughs> no matter. No corned beef and cabbage cooking where I come from, either. Mm. I come from an orphanage. A goddamn orphanage. No tougher than modern Irish mother there, either. <laughs> It's a big son of a bitching German. He wore a chef's hat and a dirty, filthy apron, and he slept right in the kitchen. Orphans always hungry. Orphans love to creep down into the middle of the night and raid the refrigerator. Oh. But a German slept right there. One eye open. You break your back. If you're caught here, you break every bone in your body. I took a liking him, you know, he used, he used to fill my plate with, with meat and potatoes. Hmm, it was lucky for me. Or, orphans always coughing up blood, orphans dropping dead all the time. It was a terrible mortality rate in an orphanage. Yeah, thank God for them big heaping plates of meat and potatoes. Thank God for a big fucking German son of a bitch. Who is he, Treat? Name's Harold. He's an orphan. Yeah. <laughs> He's from Chicago. He had a real bad childhood. in the middle of the night treat. No, Harold. Motherless <laughs> orphans, middle of the night. Chicago orphans on a big hill facing Lake Michigan. What do they call out? The wind used to come through there and make it a terrible sound. The wind used to come through there. Then... Frightened orphans pulling their blankets up over their heads. Frightened orphans crying out. Well, you know they were crying? Oh. Mommy! <laughs> Thanks to God, Mommy. Hey, orphans don't know the difference between a mommy and a daddy. Yeah, they don't know the difference between a mommy and a fucking tangerine. <laughs> yeah, they're poor motherless bastards. Mommy. Huh. Mommy. Harold. Harold. 
You know what these are, Philip? What? Stocks. Deeds. Securities. Guy's walking around with a million bucks worth of certificates under his arms. <laughs> Come on. We hit Bader, Philip. Dumb bastard. He could have passed out. Somebody could have mugged him. Somebody could have kidnapped him. His face, Street. Don't get too attached to it. He's got a friendly face. <laughs> you treat? You're not gonna cut him, are you? Straight to the arms of my mother. <laughs> yeah, mother. Yeah, your mother. <laughs> your mother takes in laundry. <laughs> no mark in a squealer. up in the attic under the cedar chest. Where's the other? There's no other. Women have only one foot? I don't think so, Trita. I think she must have two feet, only she lost one of her shoes. You figured that out all by yourself, huh? Yes. Be doing a lot of figuring, Philip. I haven't done any figuring, Treat. Maybe you're pulling my chain, Philip. Maybe you ain't hanging out in no closet all day. I ain't pulling your chain, Treat. Maybe you're seeing all kinds of people while I'm out working, making us a living. Huh? Maybe you was looking out the window and this real nice looking lady walked by wearing these very high heeled shoes. Huh? You sure you didn't tap on the window, Philip? And <laughs> You sure you didn't undress her right here on this very sofa, Philip? You sure the two of you didn't make an afternoon of it here on our sofa and she had to leave in a hurry holding her one shoe? It never happened, huh? Treat. It never huh? happened. No. I want this shoe out of here. But maybe, maybe it was Mom's shoe, Treat. Maybe it's been under your all these years. This treat. ain't my shoe. Mom would have never wore a shoe like this. Can I keep it? I'm gonna keep it. I want it. this shoe out of here. I can't see why I can't keep it. You're from my room on a side. I don't want it in my room. I want it in this fucking room. Open the window. Open the fucking window.
You're gonna have to take care of Harold tomorrow. I'm gonna be out making some inquiries. We hit pay dirt, Philip. We're gonna be fucking rich. Brown paper bag. <laughs> he's, he's probably got some some squibs mineral oil in that brown bag. Uh, maybe a jar of planters peanut butter. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. He's gonna go home and make himself some some nice dick peanut butter sandwiches. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Seen something, mister? Mm -hmm. You speaking to me? Mm. Are you hungry? Mm. Maybe you're hungry. Maybe that's it. Whoa. Well, Treat's gonna be home real soon now, hey? He'll probably make you a tuna sandwich. Star kiss tuna and mayo on toast. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I figured you'd like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been eating Star Kiss tuna for lunch for years now. Yeah. I used to make myself peanut butter sandwiches, but I, I got sick of them. I like variety in my food. Out there now. The shoe steer me straight in the face, drive me crazy. Hey, listen, mister. If I climb out that window and I bring back that shoe, you keep it to yourself, won't you? Mm -hmm. Thing is, Mister, I ain't supposed to go out because I got this this terrible, terrible allergy. I almost died once. I went out over to the corner there, the grocery store with treat, and my face it got all red, and my tongue swelled up. I was gasping for breath. I don't breathe in any of that deadly pollen. <laughs> hey, I can trust you again, I'm mister. Get over there. Mm-hmm. Shh. I don't think 
Shit, it's gonna like this. You're supposed to be sitting over there. I'm just... I'm only thing supposed to touch you. I'm only supposed to watch and see that everything is okay. Oh, fuck. I don't know what I'm gonna do now, mister. Treat's gonna come on soon now and ask for coming over there and... I don't know what I'm gonna say! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are you saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you're saying! Take off your gag, mister, because I ain't supposed to touch you. Shit. He's gonna kick my ass. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. She's gonna be so pissed off when he get back. He's gonna, he's gonna kick my ass. He's gonna say, he's gonna say, I'm gonna. Oh, shit. Fuck. God damn it. Shit. Mm -hmm. Houdini's. Real name was Eric Weiss. Yiddish a fellow Houdini. Don't let the Italian flavor fool you. Born Eric Weiss, east side of New York. Oh. What am I going to say to Treat? Well, let me take care of that. He's going to slap me around. He's not going to touch you. How can you stop him? I have my ways. Treat's got a violent temper. I love violent tempers. See over there, he's gonna go crazy. Well, I'm not gonna be over here. Where are you gonna be? Oh, I'm gonna be on the on a couch, probably sitting on the couch reading a magazine. What's your name? Philip. Philip. Mine's Harold. Pleased to meet you. You don't want to shake? Treat said not to touch you. Well, not ever? I don't know. What did he mean just now, just today? I didn't ask him. Because that would be a shame if we could never touch. I could never put my arm around your shoulders, give him an encouraging squeeze. How come you're walking around with your shoes untied? I don't know how to lace them. We don't know how to tie a knot. I drive it to get all... They get all tangled up. Well, it's no crime. A man doesn't have to know how to tie a knot. Didn't you ever hear of uh, loafers? Loafers? Yeah. You have no need of laces with loafers, Philip. Didn't anyone ever tell you that? You're a deprived person, Philip. I mean, you don't know the principle behind electricity, do you? No. But you can turn on a light. Yeah. Fuck laces. You are gonna be wearing loafers from now on in. What color you like? What do you mean? What color loafer? <laughs> I don't know. Well, how about uh, pale yellow? Pale yellow's okay. I'm gonna buy you a pair of pale yellow loafers. Come on! This is a real tragic situation I've wandered into. One boy's a delinquent. The other boy's shoulders just dying for a, a gentle, encouraging squeeze. They are? But didn't anyone ever give your shoulders an encouraging squeeze? I don't think so. Well, that's a tragedy. Every young man's shoulders need an encouraging squeeze now and then. Treat never did that. No, I imagine not. But how about your father? He ran away from home when I was small. He deserted the family. Yes. Well, I know shoulders, Philip. If I know anything, I know all about shoulders. If you want me to give him a squeeze, try it out. See how it feels. I don't know. 
You don't have to touch me. I'll touch you. Well, maybe I'd be all right. That'll be fine. Come on over here. Come on. Kidnapped Harold. I'm gonna tell you what I want you to do. What did you say to me? Hey! Fuck. The fuck did you say to me? Tell the prison come in here again and untie him, no, huh? Huh? Harold Flynn didn't do it. He did it himself, I swear to God. How did he do it? He's got to be some kind of magician or something, because all of a sudden he, he was in the other room. I mean, it, it happened right before my very eyes. Yeah? Yeah. His, his gag disappeared, his mouth began moving, his arm come up, and pretty soon he was completely untied. What did he talk about, Philip? Nothing special. He talked about Chicago, I think, and uh, Houdini. Houdini? Yeah. He said this Houdini's a Jewish fellow. He said that? Mm-hmm. This guy's a bullshit, I feel like. Houdini isn't Jewish? Talking about it! What's he doing up there? He's shaving. He's using my razor? He, he wanted to be presentable when you came home. This guy's taking over. Well, he's not taking over. What's he doing, Philip? I kidnapped the son of a bitch. He's supposed to be a kidnapped victim. He's not a bad guy. Oh, no? No. He told me I should wear loafers. You said that? Yeah. That way I won't have to walk around my laces untied. 
What kind of shit is that? He said he'd buy me a new pair. He said that? Mm-hmm. Where does this guy get the nerve? Don't hit him, Treat. How come he didn't run away or call the cops? He wanted to see you, Treat. He took a liking to you. What was you doing the whole time his hands was appearing? I was watching him, Treat. Just like I said, I didn't touch him. Did I do good? Never mind. How are you, son? I ain't your son. You're a dead end kid, though, aren't you? No. Well, I don't mean a real dead end kid. I don't mean a literal dead end kid. How the hell could you be a dead end kid? You'd have to be 60, 70 years of age, for Christ's sake. I mean, those dead end kids are old now. They've aged. Some of them are dead. Others suffering from debilitating illnesses. Unrecognizable. <laughs> talking about life and death, Treat. Mortality, the uh, human condition. Oh, you remind me of a dead-end kid. That's why I came home with you, and that's why I'm going to give you everything I have. I mean, that's a new name, and it's yours. Did you hear that, Treat? Shut up. Lucky thing, me meeting up with you in that bar. This is the first good thing that's ever happened to me in New Jersey. What kind of friends have you got? What do you mean? I called up some people, told them I had you. I told them to get it together. A million bucks. Mm -hmm. What did they do? They laughed in my face. I said, how would you like to receive his ring finger with the ring still on it? They said they would love to receive it. They said if it was a nice ring, they would melt it down and get a few bucks for it on the open market. <laughs> that sounds like them. I, uh... I hope you didn't give him your name and address. I didn't give him no fucking name and address. Good. Who do you think I am? Stupid? Absolutely not. I'm calling up people, asking them for ransom. I'm going to give him my fucking name and address. You're interested in money, huh? What do you think? I think so. How do you like to work for me? For you? Yeah. Good pay, pleasant working conditions. You must be kidding. You could be my personal bodyguard. You have a streak of violence in your treat. I like that. I'm offering you 500 a week and all expenses paid. Shove it. <laughs> I'm offering you 750. I don't work for no one, mister. I'm offering you 1,000 a week. That comes to 52,000 a year. That's not peanuts. And I'm uh, talking about a position where there's room for advancement. I think you're full of shit. Here's your first month's salary in advance. $4,000. Count it. Bring that here, Philip. Bring it the fuck here. Where'd you get this? My armpit. I got your wallet. I never carry all my money in my wallet, Pete, just in case I get robbed. I carry my money in my, uh, my armpit, my money belt, my hat, anywhere but in my wallet. How much you got on you? Quite a bit, Pete, and access to much more. What do you say, is it a deal? No deal. A thousand dollars, that's my final offer. I don't take orders. I'm easy to get along with. I kidnapped you. Who's in control here? That depends. I'm in control. This is my house. You are my kidnap victim. I understand that. Yeah. So don't go offering me nothing. 
Empty out your fucking pockets, mister. I can't do that. You can't do that? It's, uh, against my principles. I'll cut your fucking heart out, mister. Do what he says, Harold. Look! What are you? On a first name basis? Well, Philip and I have an understanding. He uh, calls me Harold, I call him Philip. I don't work for nobody. You understand me? They tried to get me to work in a department store once. The only trouble is I burned it down. <laughs> You're violent. Fucking aim, mister. I like it. Give me all your money right now. I'm gonna cut your fucking heart out, I swear to God. He's not kidding. I'll give you money, Treat, I told you that. I'll give you way more than what I have on me. You work for me. This guy's crazy. He's well-intentioned, Treat. He don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm gonna take on the two of you, as a matter of fact. I don't intend to leave Philip out of the picture. I'm gonna uh, work out a package deal. Talking about new clothes, fine food, fancy women. You like cashmere? I like cashmere. I'm talking about all of the best. Maybe we should do a treat. This guy's dangerous. He's putting ideas in your head, making you think you can go out there like the rest of us. I don't want you dropping dead. I'm gonna drop dead. I got the responsibility to take care of you. I don't want your throat and tongue swelling up. I don't want you gasping for breath. I ain't gonna gasp for breath. All right. 1750 a week for the two of you for the first six months. A nice, healthy bonus later on. I'm uh, talking about red-headed women, Treat. Red-headed, freckled women, Philip. Do you like breasts? I like breasts. Mm -hmm. I have got just the girl for you. Don't cut this fucking heart out! Drop the knife, Treat. Little dead-end kid, my own little dead-end kid. You're gonna be a dead, dead-end kid. First thing you do, you kidnap a man, is frisk him. You're an amateur. You're a rank amateur. I'm not gonna hurt you. You understand? I'm just gonna hire you. You're violent. I realized that at the bar downtown. That's why I came with you. I admire violent men. Men will stop at nothing. If you're gonna work for me, Mr. Treat, you're gonna be my personal bodyguard and all-around man. I'm gonna train you. In a few weeks, I'm gonna be able to put my life in your hands. Can you believe that? I mean, right now, you're filled with rage. You can hardly contain yourself. You don't care whether you live or die. You just wanna get at me, am I right? Bullets don't mean a thing to you. Your life don't mean a thing to you. You're a wild animal. But I'm gonna tame you, Treat. I'm gonna make you my very own. That's uh, lesson number one, Philip. It does not pay to lose control. You ever lose control? No. <laughs> Come here, sir. You're a good boy. Well, let me encourage you. encouragement, don't you?
fabulous day today, Harold. How about you? Can't complain. Huh? Yeah, how about that? Huh? Look at that. Yeah. What do you think of this fit? It's perfect. Yeah? It's not too tight in the crotch there. The crotch is fine. Say, you like this suit as much as you like the beige one? Oh, I like it even more. No kidding. Even more than the beige. Hey. Well, I tell you, I can really get into this shit, Harold. <laughs> you don't mind if I hang on to this here plastic for a few more days, do you? Be my guest. I tell you, this little bastard is changing my life. You're developing a sense of style, Treat. Yeah. That's fine, but remember, everything in moderation. Well, I don't know much about moderation, Harold. I can say that, Treat. Is that a new ring? Yeah, it's a new ring, Harold. Say, I got your uh, Chicago paper here. Hi. Say, what are you I drinking? Appreciate that. I'm having bourbon and water. Bourbon and water coming up. The only constant thing in my life, Treat. Everything else is in flux. The whole goddamn universe is in flux, except this one constant. Whenever liquor makes an appearance, you can bet your bottom dollar old Harold is sure to order bourbon and water. Well, that's good to know. These are the facts of life, Treat. Memorize them. They're memorized. Did you uh, stop off at the post office? I sure did, Harold. I stop off there every day. Well, I don't know what's holding up your merchandise. Have patience, it'll come. You know, Harold, it's a real pleasure mixing you these bourbon and waters and mm -hmm. picking up that Chicago paper and taking them various taxi cab rides. When are you gonna send me on a real assignment? Whenever you're ready, Treat. Well, I'm ready now, Harold. What do you say we fly up to Chicago and pick up that uh, merchandise? Ha! <sighs> Can't do that. There are a number of men who were looking for me. Why don't I fly down myself? You think you could handle it? Well, I can handle it, Harold. Taking good care of you, haven't I? I have no complaints. Nobody's laid a hand on you, have they? <laughs> Nobody. Not even a finger. Not a finger. Well, if one of them fellas was from Chicago was to point a gun at you, I would put myself between your body and that bullet. You'd have to move awfully fast. Well, I can move fast, Harold. You'd sacrifice yourself? Whatever it takes. This is amazing. So how about it, Harold? How about sending me to Chicago, pick up that merchandise? What about the ring? What does the ring have to do with my going to Chicago? Where'd you get it? Well, some fella gave it to me. What does it matter? It matters. What was his name? Well, I don't remember his name, for Christ's sake. Herbie, I think. Yeah, Herbie. Well, no, no it was uh, Jake, maybe. Yeah, Jake. Harold, I was standing on the corner waiting for the red light to turn green when this big, fat son of a bitch came by and scuffed my shoe. It was an accident, huh? It was my brand new alligator shoe here. There's no justice. What's that supposed to mean? Well, if you're looking for justice, you're living in the wrong century. This is the 20th century. Well, I don't know if I agree with you there, Harold. Do you mind if we have a slight difference of opinion? I don't mind. Good. Because when we turned the corner, I grabbed the big son of a bitch and slammed him against the wall, and I took his ring. So you see, Harold, sometimes, every so often, there is justice. So how about it, Harold? How about sending me to Chicago? I got my whole new wardrobe. No, I'm afraid not. No. What do you mean, no? There's more to it than that. What else is there? There's your feelings. What's the matter with my feelings? They're still uncontrollable. What am I supposed to do with them, huh? Well, did, uh, did you ever try counting to ten? Counting to ten? Yeah. You know, one, two, three, four, et cetera. You must be kidding, right? I'm serious. It's the first step. It gives your emotions time to settle down.
This must be fucking heaven. Hey, what'd you do, Treat? Knock off some paraplegic? I work for this fella now. He sends me on assignments. I'm his bodyguard and right-hand man. I just been to the main post office. I stop there every day for him. <laughs> Who's gonna send you on an assignment, Treat? Some... Some ignoramus yeah. got his head up his ass. Well, Bonnie, look at this. My first two months' salary. And there's more where this come from. Plenty more. One, two. The reason I stopped by, Bonnie, is because I borrowed one of your wrecks a few weeks ago. Wanted to pay my debts. I ain't into this nickel and dime hustle no more. I'm in the big time. Listen, Barney. Here's a little bonus. Spend a night in the Waldorf. Spend a couple nights, as a matter of fact. Give yourself a new lease on life. This place is a fucking nightmare. Listen, wise guy. I ain't hard up. I don't need your, your fucking charity. Something special here, Harold. What's that? Special delivery letter. <laughs> Took real good care of this here, baby, Harold. I appreciate that. Say, you want me to open it for you? No, I can manage that. Will you put it in my pocket, please? Yeah, sure thing, Harold. Thank you. You and Harold getting thick as thieves. <laughs> Harold's no thief. Oh, no? Well, then how come he said he couldn't go back to Chicago? How come he said he was on the lamb? Didn't say he was on the lamb. Not on a lamb. On the lamb. Wait, he never said he was on any kind of lamb. Didn't you ever hear that expression before? I heard on the, the late night movie, The Black Hand starring Cornell Wilde. And what'd you think? You think Cornell Wilde was on a lamb? Yes. What was he doing on a lamb? Mm, maybe he was sitting on it. You got some imagination, Philip. Got some for you. What's the matter? What's the matter? You think I'm gonna do something? Is that it? Yes. I've always taken good care of you, haven't I, Philip? Huh? An extra large bottle of Hellman's mayonnaise. Well, um, I'm actually sick and tired of mayonnaise treat. What are you saying? Well, I got a taste of my mouth for corned beef, cabbage, 
the way Harold prepares it. It's nice and it's thick and it's juicy. And you dip it in this, this dark brown mustard, see? You just dip it in there. Want me to cut you off a slice? Suit yourself. Come on, let's eat. Nice sound, huh? Rain on the roof. Hmm. Huh. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, that's a good book. A little stuffy in here, ain't it? Maybe I should uh, open a window. Hmm. Why not? Well, you ain't allowed to breathe in the night air. Who says? Treat. He says it's even worse than the day. Well, you, you can't keep out the night. It slips in through the door, comes in through the cracks. The whole of New Jersey's covered by the night. The whole of the Western Hemisphere, as a matter of fact. Don't do that, Harold! Come on over here. Let me give you some encouragement. Did real well, Treat. Oh, yeah, I was ready, Harold. Oh, yeah, I could handle an assignment. What uh, took you so long? I was getting worried. Well, you know the traffic, Harold. Did you take the cab? Nah, I took the bus. Well, I gave you specific instructions because I didn't want anyone following you home. No one followed me home. Honest to God. 
Next time I'm gonna take the cab, though, because the bus was a real bitch. Oh, why's that? There was this big black guy sitting there. He must have been a basketball player or something. He was sitting there with his long legs spread out wide. Squeezing the life out of all the passengers on either side of him. To his left was a guy in a suit. Man, I didn't give a shit about him. But to his right was this sweet little old lady all scrunched up. It was... What happened? You want to hear the story? Yeah, I'm very interested in the story. All right. The little old lady finally gets up and leaves the bus. So I sit down. That's a mistake. Well, it's a long ride on the bus, Harold. Yeah, go on. So I'm sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. There's no room. Mm -hmm. So I figure, maybe if I apply a little leg pressure, this guy will ease up. And did he? The guy doesn't budge, Harold. So I apply more pressure. I mean, I'm straining. My leg is straining against this guy's huge black leg. And then what? The guy lets on like nothing's happening. I mean, this fucking guy is the rock of Gibraltar. You're in a situation, Treat. I warned you about this. Well, I had no choice. Well, you didn't have to sit down. I figured the guy would shift over. The man isn't gonna shift over. You knew that, Treat. Let's lay our cards on the table. In your heart of hearts, you knew there was no way that man was gonna shift over. <laughs> yeah, you're right. In my heart of hearts, I knew this guy would never shift over. And you sit down anyway. I sat down because the son of a bitch was squeezing the life out of all the passengers. Now, somebody had to do something, right? Oh, you're talking about justice again, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Justice. I turned to the guy, and I says, guess what's in my right hand? Well, what are you doing with my gun? Well, it was just lying around, Harold. I figured I could use some protection. Uh-huh. Go on with your story. I says to the guy, my hand is pressed against a pistol, which is aimed directly at your black heart. You said that? Yeah. I told him I was going to count to 10, Harold, just like you taught me. I says, you don't close your legs and give me some breathing space. By the time I count to 10, my index finger is going to press against the trigger this here semi-automatic pistol, and a bullet is going to explode right through my jacket into your big black heart. <laughs> He sat there quietly for a moment. And then I began counting, just like you said. One, two, three, four. And by the time I got to five, he was off of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would have happened, Treat, if, um, well, say, uh, let's say you got to 10 and he still didn't move? That wasn't the case. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm discussing a, a hypothetical situation. Well, I don't know nothing about them hypothetical situations. Uh, you knew when you sat down it was going to be a case of wills. Well, I knew that. I admitted that, Well, yes. let's, let's, uh, let's uh, take it one step further. Uh, you get a 10, he doesn't budge. What do you do? He doesn't budge. Not an inch. You want the truth, Harold, or you want me to bullshit you? Well, I want the truth. I press the trigger. I blow the bastard's brains all over the bus. Boom, 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 boom! Ha, ha, ha! And then what? What do you mean, then what? Well, uh, he's dead. Uh, blood is everywhere. Blood's all over your new suit. Blood's all over the people around you who are screaming. What do you do? Well, I didn't think about that. Well, you're carrying a package that could, could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. What do you do? Jesus, Harold, I don't know. I, uh... I run, I suppose. I, uh... I uh, jump off the bus and I run down the street. Yeah, you're running down the street covered from head to foot with blood. I trusted you, Treat. I relied on you. Jesus, Harold, this is a terrible thing. You're not ready to go on an assignment. You can't control your feelings. Let me have the gun. Let me have the gun.
Hey, uh... Give me another chance. Okay, I'm gonna give you one more chance. Philip! Yeah? Did you hear the story? Mm-hmm. You're on a bus. You play the black man. I'm the black man. Huh? I'm the black man. You're the black man. You don't budge for anything, okay? Sit next to him, Tree. I won't fucking budge, huh? If I had the wing of an angel. He's singing, Harold. Oh, it's all right. What the fuck is he singing about? I would the black guy didn't sing. It's all right. You just concentrate on your I'll part. I'll to the arm of my poor lover. I'm concentrating. Right. I'm you just sit down. down. The bus is crowded. I'll be you have no room. What do you do? Well, I don't do nothing because I don't want to create a situation. Your balls are yeah. turning blue. My balls are blue? Mm -hmm. What do you do? I would fly. Well, maybe I just give him a little nudge, you know, Harold? Just to test the waters. Mm -hmm. You doing that? Yeah. I'm giving him a nudge. Mm -hmm. The bastard won't do What do you do? I would fly. Huh? I don't do nothing. Because I don't want to create a situation. I just ease up and I just sit here with my blue balls. Okay, okay. The bus is jam-packed and a cripple comes on. A cripple? Yeah, a horribly deformed cripple. A, a soldier. A Vietnam veteran, his testicles blown off in the war. Oh, Jesus, his testicles? Yeah. The man is a walking nightmare. Each step is terrible agony. I'll play that man. Oh, oh. Help me, somebody. I'm in pain. Oh, somebody, please give me a seat. Here, mister, take my seat, please. What, I can't sit there? There's no room there. This guy, look here. Too loud, baby. Give this guy a seat. He's a vet. Why don't you go take a fly and shit? What did you say to me? I'm not gonna move a fucking inch. You understand me? I never said that, Harold. Please, the medicine is wearing off. Jesus, the medicine's wearing off. Damn, back! Head to wing. Please, I'm in pain. Why don't you kiss my ass? I gave my balls to you guys. Hit the wings of an angel. Oh, yeah. me like this. Oh, yeah. I got a perfect heart. I was dead to I got no balls. I got a perfect heart. Kiss her. I will hug her. I will love my baby. I will love my baby. What happened? His feelings were too much for him. He tried to hold him, huh? <laughs> Little dead end kid. I appreciate that. Don't be afraid, son. I don't need you!
Philip, I think you're ready for a walk. Walk? Mm-hmm. What? I, I don't think I can do that, Harold. Oh, well, why not? Because once I go out, once I turn a corner on the side of the house, Treat says I might never find my way back home again. You know your address, don't you? Why? Well, I know my address, all right, 6040 North Comac Street, but Harold, the only thing is, Treat says you go up to the wrong person, ask directions, why? Well, they might even slit your throat. I have something for you, Philip. You need never worry about uh, getting lost again. What is it? It's the map of Newark. I've never seen one before. You never saw a map? I've seen a map of the United States of America, but I didn't know the maps of cities and streets. There are maps of everything, Philip. There's a map of the whole planet Earth. There's a map of the Milky Way galaxy that we're a part of. We are? Mm-hmm. We're tucked away safe and sound at the very edge of the Milky Way, but you're swimming in the great ocean of space. We're circling the sun, Philip. We're in the Western Hemisphere, North American continent, state of New Jersey, Essex County. Can you see this? Uh -huh. Do you know what that is? What is it? Newark. <laughs> and this... Is Kamak Street. That's Kamak Street. Yeah. The 6040 block. I'm gonna circle it, Philip, so that you'll never get lost again. You're gonna know exactly where you are in time and space. Keep it. It's yours. I know where I am now, Harold. I know exactly where I am. Yeah, yeah. Slip your arm. In.
said full service will be resumed by Tuesday. And now the weather. The next three days will be mostly... <laughs> You all right? What are you doing that coat? It's, it's Mum's coat. How come you're holding Mum's coat? You seen Harold? I seen a friend of yours. <laughs> Who'd you see? seen your old buddy, Errol Flynn. He's not my buddy. I hardly know him. I'm wondering what a famous movie star like Errol Flynn is doing hanging around Newark, sneaking into people's houses, underlining words, underlining sentences, even phrases. Oh, no. He must have been hanging around here for years, Philip. Look at this. Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain. The Arabian Nights. The County of fucking Monte Cristo. And in each of these books, Philip, underlined words. Thousands of underlined words! <laughs> Look what else I found here, Philip. <laughs> All this time, we were thinking she was some kind of <laughs> one-legged tramp. And all along, she had two legs. <laughs> Imagine that. She does have an unusual problem, though, Philip. This is a shoe for a right foot. And the shoe we threw out the window was for another right foot. Which leads me to believe that this woman has two right feet. She look like, huh, Philip? Some kind of awful monster walking around the streets of New Jersey, leaning to the left. Huh? I took a walk tonight, Treat. I will... I, I walked all the way over to, to the subway station. I ain't interested. I was breathing okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't have an allergy reaction like you said I would. I don't want to hear no more. Harold told me a secret. You know, you can, you can stand on dead to turn styles, putting in nickels and dimes. You can, you can say open a sesame. You can say all kinds of words, but it, it won't do any good unless you got one of these magical coins, see? But if Harold hadn't given me one of those, I never would have been able to take that ride. 
Anybody can buy one of them lousy tokens. All you gotta do is go into any token booth in the country. But you never told me about token booths. You never told me about nothing. I was out making us a living. I had the responsibility. You told me I would die if I went outside. You don't remember what happened last time? Your face swole up. Your tongue was hanging out of your mouth. You couldn't breathe. Well, my tongue ain't hanging out. I took a walk to night treat. I walked over to Broad and Lonely, and I was, and I, and I wasn't even scared. Cause Harold, he gave me some. Let's see. See? It's a fucking map. Did you? You never gave me no map. You, you never told me I could find my way. I didn't want it separated. I didn't want nothing to happen to you. Nothing's gonna happen to me because I know where I am now. You know where I am, and you ain't never gonna take that away from me. Where are you? I'm a 60, 40, North Camac Street in Newark. I'm on the eastern edge of the state of New Jersey in the United States of America. I'm on the North American continent, on the planet Earth, in a Milky Way galaxy, swimming in the great ocean of space. I'm safe and sound on the very edge of the Milky Way. That's where I am, Treat. Your retreat. You're it. The game's over. How come Harold never mentioned to you that there was people out there who might just walk up and steal your map, Philip? Huh? Terrible people. Give me my map. Malicious people. Treat, give me my map. People who got no scruples at all. Stop saying it, you fuck! I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! You hate me! I hate you! You hate me! I hate you! You don't need me anymore, huh, Philip? I guess you can get along without me. I'm gonna travel, Treat. I'm gonna go visit places. I guess you don't need your big brother, Treat, no more. Your big brother, Treat, who stole so we could have food on the table. So you could have them stockist tuna sandwiches spread thick with Hellman's mayonnaise. And then when they come for you, your big brother, Treat, who stood in the door blocking the way. You remember? I remember. You were crying. You hid in the closet. Then when they tried to come in. I stopped him. I bit the man's hand. I was only a little boy, but I bit the man's hand, you remember? I remember. I took care of you. All these years. You don't need me anymore, is it right, Bill? 
I'm leaving! Where was he all the years I was raising you, Philip? Where the hell was he? Huh? Where the hell was he, Philip? I knew you'd be back. I knew it. I'd never leave you, Philip. You wouldn't. I'll always be with you. Forever and ever, you can count on me. I found my way home. I found my own home and I ain't got no more map. Get a map at any gas station. I can't. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, oh. Oh, uh, all over America. You'll never be lost again. Mm, maybe one day I won't even need a map. Maybe. I stole the, uh, the German's key one night, boys. <laughs> Big German son of a bitch. I reached right into his pocket and stole his key. You never see nothing like it. Orphans everywhere. Running through the streets. Pressing their faces against the window. German beat the living hell out of us when we got back. <laughs> we didn't mind, though. We'd seen what we had to see. It's all right, fella. You just needed some encouragement. How about you, son? some encouragement. You're a dead-end kid, though, ain't you? I know. I know. A fucking dead-end kid. When I see one. I can't hear you, Philip. <laughs> Dead. 
did. I never touched his hand before. <laughs> It's okay now, though, because he's dead. I am a dead end kid, Harold. I am a fucking dead end kid. Harold!